good. How are you, Doris? Not bad, man. Not bad. Uh, good to good to sync up with you, man. Yeah, um, thanks for joining. Yeah, for sure. No, thanks for having me. I mean, you know, uh, Mark was 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 stoked on connecting us. So good stuff. Yeah, definitely. And it's uh, it's about time I finally had a Bulls fan on here. <laughs> I can't believe I haven't, to be honest. Yeah, it's kind of surprising, no doubt. It seems that a lot of people are Raptor fans or Sixers fans. That's I feel like that's the highest that I've I've had. But I don't know what it is. <laughs> nice man. So yeah, catch me up, man. Yeah, definitely. Um, so it's 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 good to be doing this this little thing where you know these two worlds come together, and um, I do find a lot of people who sit right at that little verge where they combine and it, it's great to to talk because people get to nerd out about it so i'm glad i'm glad you're <laughs> one of those people yeah for sure i mean you know it'd be interesting to see where my where my knowledge actually overlaps <laughs> but no doubt like i uh you know yeah i mean cool hoops hoops and music are, are both right good, th- good things to be uh yeah you know so keeping up on well, we'll start talking a little bit of music, and I, I feel like since uh, it's January, we could still uh, consider it a new year. Uh, is there anything from 2022 that you've listened to that you loved, or anything even more recent that you've been listening to? Yeah, for sure. Like, like just as far as like records or whatever that I'm, yeah. I've been spending. Yeah, definitely. So I was like actually thinking about this because I thought maybe, uh, you know, um maybe you would ask ask me something like this it's weird like um think about like the three records that i've probably listened to the most over the last stretch um so maybe not what one would expect but i just think i don't know man my taste has been kind of directionally different um yeah so there's this record by a woman named Charlotte Day Wilson. She's, I don't know if you're familiar with her. She's like from Canada, kind of an R&B singer. Mm-hmm. Um, record's called Alpha. Um, just really awesome, super cool record. I've just been kind of like into a lot of like that kind of pop R&B um, yeah, yeah. stuff recently. I really like that. I really love like the Rosalia record, Mo- Moto mm-hmm. Mommy. I think that record's amazing. It's just like very, very like... Um, just so sort of like creative sonically and there's a lot yeah, of like yeah. really interesting things going on there from like she blew up a songwriting yeah songwriting perspective but also just yeah. like the the production uh-huh. like everything about it i think is just really really interesting um and then i think the third one that kind of comes to mind is like i've been revisiting some of the john k sampson records like the mm-hmm. soul records and that winter wheat record for whatever reason the first time around didn't really like click with me yeah but um but yeah i kind of had that on more recently a bunch and really really cool songs on that record uh super into that right now so i guess like those are those are the three that kind of been um, it's a good, it's a good uh a breath of, right there yeah it's a, it's a lot of different <laughs> types of music which is awesome yeah decent mix for sure um you mentioned rosalia that reminds me did you check out the ethel kane uh album because that blew up very quickly as well I have not listened to that, but I'll definitely spin it. Yeah, um, it's it's really interesting. I feel like it's uh, it's it's kind of has a lot of that, you know, Phoebe Bridgers and uh, yeah, Billy Eilish type sound, but it also mm-hmm. has a little like old like lo-fi folk to it as well. It's really interesting. Yeah, that's cool, man. I mean, I think like you know, it's an interesting time in. There's some really like there's some more creative, interesting things that I guess one might think of as being in kind of like the mainstream, like, like of music right now. Mm-hmm. Um, like the Billie Eilish records are cool. Obviously Phoebe Bridgers is just like having this incredible run. Yeah. Um, and she's been involved, I think in a few different projects that are really interesting. And mm-hmm. um, so, yeah, it's a kind of a, kind of a cool time in that sort of, like part of the industry yeah it's crazy that like you know i guess what used to be such like a niche kind of subgenre can like even those like specific subgenres can find their way to be more mainstream and be uh successful which is really cool yeah for sure um 
Cool. Yeah, that's that's definitely some good stuff. I and some stuff I'll need to check out. I know uh we have some people in our Discord channel who are a lot of, a lot of Canadians in our Discord and uh they refer to it as CanCon. So you you mentioned that Charlotte Day Wilson, the Canadian content. Uh yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, that's it's very well loved. <laughs> Love it, man. Um, how about as far as uh your music? Are you making anything new? Is there anything going on with you know Lawrence Arms or Sundowner or anything new? Yeah, so I mean, like, you know, honestly, right now things are really quiet. Like the last thing that happened was really Skeleton Coast for the the, the Lawrence Arms record. That mm-hmm. was the last record I really wrote. Um, some of it's just like time of life, man. I got like young kids and yeah, yeah. like I'm just in like um like super young kids. So I'm like just in a like a little bit of a i'm like time poor yeah like pretty hard right now <laughs> you know um i get that so a yeah. little bit of like a of a creative desert i guess um over the last like few years uh um it's been a long time since i made a sundown record for whatever reason i think that like the just like the the succession of those records really tracked against certain like milestones in my in my life and for whatever reason like that next one just hasn't hit yet. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, I think, it, I mean, it's probably going to be almost 10 years now since the last Sundar record. So that's a long, a long stretch. Yeah. Not that, um, you know, I mean, the Lawrence arms are certainly not strangers to like taking time to get out a new record right. either, but, um, uh, but I don't know. We'll see. Like, I think I've always found that, you know, things start to like bubble up and kind of percolate and then, you know, there becomes like some, some momentum towards trying to make something again. And so, you know, I feel like, yeah, I hope that comes my way again on the Sundowner side. And then Lawrence Arms side, I mean, we just, the timing was so sort of crazy with like when we made, like when right. we actually tracked and made Skeleton Coast, we did it in outside of El Paso, Texas at a studio called Sonic Ranch, which is mm-hmm. like this, just like unbelievable kind of like, it was like two weeks of like summer camp or something <laughs> like totally like outsider summer camp. Like, uh, and you know, it just really was, I mean, we finished it, I think a month before the first lockdowns, you know, in oh, March God. of 2020. Yeah. And we kind of made the decision to just put it out anyway. Um, even though we kind of like really moved into like the pandemic and then, you know, obviously like people's lives just, mm-hmm. you know, really shifted. Um, I think, you know, pretty dramatically. And with, I don't know, I guess from my perspective, still kind of emerging, you know, from that a bit. Right. Um, even though we've kind of seen, I think the industry, like, like touring kind of start to pick up again and, and, and people starting to get active again, but um, yeah, just, I mean, the timing is really, really insane on that. And so, um, but that was such a fun record to make. And I think, you know, I mean, the idea of the Lawrence Arbor has always been like, again feeling excited about the next one as opposed mm-hmm. to like like there's a mandate or something yeah, like we should, should put one. one out yeah right right and so um you know kind of same thing where it's like i feel like the time will start to like um come you know and yeah um we do have some like we're just so spread out now so like as a band and so we have like the logistics to contend with oh yeah you're on west coast now yeah yeah so i live in oregon and neil's down in la and brendan's okay. in chicago so we have kind of a logistic we have to find like a meeting place yeah. like a centralized unified location where we can go you know figure this out um but it all starts with songs anyway yeah and that's way before it even matters geographically at this point so so it's gotta start right. somewhere which is like ideas and songs and stuff and i mean usually that starts to you know usually there's some like first song like mm-hmm. that either Brendan like writes or I write and that ends up being like the starting point and then it tracks yeah you know forward it's, from there snowballs yeah it's a, yeah. I'm sure it's you know one one song gets out and you're like you get excited to kind of keep it yeah going. exactly yeah you need that like yeah it's like that excitement piece of like oh yeah there's still still songs to write here that feel exciting and whatever right. um so you mentioned so not, um I'll say not a ton going on right now but yeah. um uh you know but i look i still feel like it's weird it's like i feel on the one hand it feels like a long time ago since we made skeleton coast on the other hand like you know occasionally like like 
spin a few of those songs and it feels fresh. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's really not, it's not that long ago, you know, a lot of people wait, you know, five, six years to put out another album and, and it's, it's weird. It feels like sometimes, sometimes people want, want like a declaration of like, are you guys still a band or not? And it's like, it doesn't need to have that. Yeah, for sure. And I think a band like the Lawrence Arms, I mean, we've been, we're now over 20 years of doing yeah. this. And, you know, I'd say, you know, overall, we've more or less like kind of, you know, done things in the way that made the most sense at any kind of given time. Mm -hmm. And um, certainly over the last like 10 years, there hasn't been a real like, I don't know, like some sort of, uh, you know, standard practice of doing things where you like make a record and then you do a tour cycle and then you make another record and you kind of like bounce back and forth between those things. It just right. never really kind of worked quite that way in, for us. Um, and that's a nice thing. I mean, uh, I think, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, there's that kind of like weird, there's like a, like, I think there's certain bands that make sense, like, to be mm -hmm. in that sort of, like, cycle. And and the reality is that, like, you know, a lot of us have other things going on or, or like, like, like uh, I guess, like, boring standard jobs. That, <laughs> yeah, right. You know, go along with just, yeah, you know. So, not everyone realized, out, so. uh, you know, paid rock stars, or that's your salary, <laughs> yeah, right? So, <laughs> you know. I get it. And, and too, like, yeah, you all not, not just jobs and stuff, you, you know, it ebbs and flows, I'm sure with what projects you're working on. I think Neil was doing like Joyce Manor stuff, right? Yeah. Which is sweet. I mean, like yeah. great, great fit for Neil and like yeah. really, I think a cool opportunity. And I mean, Neil's a great drummer, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so like, I haven't seen them with Neil yet, but it'd be super fun to see Neil behind the kit, right. you know, playing with, playing with those guys. Um, yeah. Neil's got kind of a, a variety of music like mm -hmm. really music related projects happening and then you know i mean i know like bk obviously stays busy in yeah. a variety of ways creatively you know as well as kind of holding it down like having his family and stuff in chicago so for sure you know cool um well, speaking of chicago uh we can talk bulls a little bit i think yeah <laughs> talk bulls. Which is, so I, I feel it could be a loaded question maybe but <laughs> no doubt it's like what bulls you know well, I, I feel like, I mean, you're, you were like, you grew up in Chicago. Yeah. Like you're yeah, so kind I grew of a Chicago up, lifer mostly up until recently. Yeah. So I moved, I moved to Oregon, like to Portland in about 10 years ago. So okay. I'm in my forties. Um, I grew up five blocks north of Wrigley and like, I definitely remember the year like Jordan was drafted and I remember like like my formative, you know, years of, yeah, just like being a kid and growing up and liking basketball all yeah. basically corresponded with like the rise of like the Jordan led Chicago Bulls teams. So yeah, yeah definitely like, yeah, I mean, I, I consider myself a Chicago guy for sure. Um, you know, it's like funny, like Chicago people typically like, in my experience, like when you ask people where they're from, even if they no longer reside there, yeah, you know, they'll still tell you they're from Chicago. Like if you ask me where are you from, I won't be like, Oh, I'm from Oregon. Like doesn't... Right. <laughs> there's something specific to like and I feel, I'm sure it is like this with other cities, but there's something specifically about Chicago where that kind of is part of your identity that doesn't leave. Yeah, for sure. Um... For sure. Um, so yeah, anyway, I grew up like, yeah, really like I mean. I mean, I remember I watched, I think every single like playoff run, you know, up to the first title, mm -hmm. all those like battles against the Pistons, um, you know, yeah, I was like, I mean, again, I was like a 10, you know, yeah. like in the, in really like Prime that time. wheelhouse of like discovering and loving basketball, you know, and playing and stuff. So um, yeah, those years, like basically up through what the first title, you know, I mean, it's just like an epic run, man. It's like you totally. really couldn't ask ask for a, I don't know. I mean, like, of course, like people who are like, like, uh, like Chicago people who like really like sort of identify with that era of the Bulls. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the best time to have grown up watching basketball and to like root for a team 
Like it's <laughs> yeah. I see. So yeah, I'm I'm like a little staggered behind. I'm like maybe like eight to ten years behind. So like yeah, I was a kid. I remember like the tail end of of Jordan years. Mm -hmm. Um, but my like when I was in like uh college, you know, that's the Derrick Rose era, and that's when I was yep. like that was my time when I was like super into the Bulls, and I had like such high hopes, and yeah, it was a, it was a short window, but it was it was a good time. Yeah, no, I mean those are fun teams to watch and like really like like interesting mix of players and obviously like you know Deros has like um you know uh like an interesting story yeah. the highs and lows a little bit right. you know um of it but but yeah I mean being a Bulls fan is like interesting because it really does have um there's like major peaks and valleys to it you know mm -hmm. I think Chicago sports in general sort of has yeah. that storyline a little um but yeah i mean the bulls definitely like yeah major major peaks and valleys to, to being a bulls fan yeah and i feel like you mentioned you know growing up in in, in the jordan era where you you played a lot of basketball growing up too like you played yourself yeah yeah i did um yeah, i think like you know it's funny like when you when you like I think of myself as someone who played basketball for a long time when I was a yeah. kid, but you're only a kid for like actually a pretty short amount of years. Yeah. They're just super formative. So you like at, at so what point associate... is it like how far away? <laughs> right. Are you right. closer like, or you... further away from when you yeah, played? Oh, well, definitely further. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, but yeah, I think I played, you know, I mean, like basketball was the sport um yeah. that I cared the most about and played the most from probably, I don't know you know, like whatever, third, fourth grade, you know, up through into high school and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, like, like I definitely, like, I like did basketball camps and like yeah, yeah. all that, all that stuff. So I was like, it was really like a core activity for me for like all the, like middle school, you know, into high school was like playing hoops was yeah. Right there. Did you and, do like, the Jordan funny. camp? No, but I did. Um, I think I did a Northwestern camp. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Uh, I did Don Nelson's camp in New Hampshire one summer and it was like <laughs> Sharonis Marshallonis and like, <laughs> and like Don Nelson, like, like running the camp. Um, it like, totally funny, man. Um, uh, so, you know, I'll say like, it was like, yeah, like a lot of my growing up was like playing basketball and like yeah, watching yeah. basketball and caring about basketball and like, it's funny like to, you have this podcast because for me, like the transition into caring about like underground music and getting into like punk music and stuff kind of emerges. There's kind of like a, like a little bit of an overlap. And yeah, then, yeah. Like, I start to like move out into like caring about art and music. And like, I do feel like that stuff, happens you know? like in high school in your formative years and you make that decision where you're like, do I am one, am I good enough to keep playing sports? Right. 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 Well, or, or, like, 10, do I want so, to? Like, yeah. You know, so, and you know, but, gr like girls like dudes and bands, like that's that's <laughs> kind of why you do it, right? <laughs> like, but, so, uh, but yeah, yeah, man, but yeah. So I did play, I did play a lot, which is like a lot of where like the love of basketball like comes from. You know, yeah. I would say I care about care about two sports at this point in my life, really only, and it's it's like the NBA primarily and mm -hmm. and tennis. Ah. Like that's it. Those are you've, those you've are falling out of baseball. I have, yeah. I think baseball is like such this like awesome, wonderful like uh, sport, and like the history of baseball yeah. is, I think, like I mean, it's the history of America, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's like, um, you know, like Ken's Birds baseball or whatever it is, like, like amazing, amazing. And and I loved being a kid and like looking at the, you know, like the box scores. And yeah. I grew up five blocks north of Wrigley you know so right. like I grew up when like yeah you could go to Wrigley and buy a seat for five bucks or whatever and mm -hmm. like you know amazing amazing like in the Ryan Sandberg years yeah um, we have that that sample of Pat Hughes and porno and stuff films yeah too, so. yeah totally and so but at this point like watching baseball is just mm -hmm. like it, it's more than like yeah I've just fallen out of following it and yeah the time the the time dedication you know to watching baseball is totally <laughs> is is a, is a big one yeah <laughs> um but you, you you mentioned kind of the when you get the crossover between kind of sports and and mm -hmm. you know playing music being interested in music do you have uh moments where though that those things kind of actually did overlap 
where the, yeah, there is sure, kind of like, like a little bit of both. Yeah, definitely. Cause like, I'm really, so like Brendan and I became friends really in like the end of grade school, like early middle school. And that, that's really the time we started to discover music, like going to mm-hmm. reckless records in like seventh grade, eighth grade and like buying bad religion tapes or whatever it was. And, um, and so I was still like definitely playing like, you know, practicing, you know, <laughs> six days a right. week, you know, like, like gearing up for like the season, you know, even yeah, when you're yeah. in eighth grade, you're like, you know, like season's coming up, like, you know, like conditioning and all I'm going to let them know like, this year how um, good I am. <laughs> uh, so there's definitely like, as like, like early seeds of being interested in music and like wanting to figure like wanting to learn how to play guitar or whatever yeah. it was. And um, but it's just funny because like you look back on it and it's like maybe it's three or four years of my life where those mm-hmm. things like overlapped a bit and you know, but again, just like seminal in some ways, you know, like formative, right. you know, because you're just like, yeah, you're just you're so young and you're like getting exposed to all these things that are new. So definitely. As uh as you guys have, you know, kind of gotten older, is there are there moments where basketball comes up whether you're on tour or anything like is you know brendan and neil into basketball too and stuff yeah those guys don't those guys don't care about basketball (laughs) Um. it's always like it's always one person and like everyone else looks at you like you're crazy i mean it's funny because it's like i guess if you're from chicago like like with the bull when the bulls were on their run you know everyone cares about basketball there's a global cultural for that right for that brief run um but but in more of like uh you know, a real way. Yeah, yeah. Not so much, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to think like, I think the thing that's like interesting about being on tour, just like, like when I think about like, you see basketball hoops everywhere, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, like you like cruising around Europe and you just see these like old, whatever, just like hoops up yeah. in different places. And I don't know. It's just like something I always notice. you know, like never, and just like being somebody who likes basketball, you just always notice those things. Totally. Like, like here in Portland, you know, obviously like, um, you know, the big teams in Portland are, are the Blazers and the mm-hmm. Timbers, you know, soccer is big here. Mm-hmm. Um, but also like Nike HQ is here. Right. And so like, um, uh, but I feel like every street, man, there's hoops mm-hmm. in front of the houses, on the side of the houses, like everywhere you go, you know, Right. I just love seeing that. That's honestly, you know, a big part of what got me to want to do half court sessions, which is like, we, yeah. we have different people performing on different basketball courts. And it's like, that's a great venue to see people perform in. And they're yeah. everywhere. So it's, it's for sure, yeah. man. And they're like, they come they're in like all shapes too. and yeah. sizes. Yeah, totally. It's, totally. It's, One of like my, like, there's like an iconic photo of like Jordan in the early years on that court. It's in Chicago on Clybourne. And, uh, yes what is that like just north like just, of north just, avenue yep. um and the train's right behind it and it used to just be like all like graffiti on the far totally. wall like before the neighborhood kind of shifted yeah. and stuff um and i just remember going to that court and like playing here and there mm-hmm. and just like have that moment of like 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 jordan's like on this court like shooting yeah. this photo you know shooting this photo dunking on the hoop or whatever it is like those kinds totally. of things i love i love that stuff absolutely yeah Clyborne park's really cool and i definitely want to shoot a half court sessions there we did some teaser stuff there but another cool one that i i would like to go to is i forget what it's called it's margaret something park it's it's in chinatown like right it's underneath the expressway oh nice that sounds cool it's super cool yeah Yeah. i I love i love seeing you know you get so many different perspectives of different courts it's so cool yeah for sure man uh but as far as today's bulls team are you still keeping up with them so i mean as much as i can i'm not i i don't have league pass so yeah. i'm only i'm only watching you know national games when i can make it happen which isn't frequently um, these days <laughs> which no isn't frequent these days for sure yeah we you know we get a lot more west coast games espn or tnt i feel mm-hmm. like stack up on a lot of other teams that aren't chicago bulls right yeah. now um so um but I like, I mean, I like the team. I, you know, I feel like, I feel like last year, it seemed like there might be 
just like a ma like a nice chemistry that was going to yeah. actually like get get them a bit further. I feel like this year, um, just kind of like not pacing to like where off, I thought yeah. maybe thought maybe they would be. Although, you know, it's only the All Star break, and mm -hmm. like honestly, I don't really start paying attention till after the All Star break. Yeah, and but I like the I mean I like the guys that they put together. I think like. I think like from a organization standpoint, it seems like they care more about trying to put a great team on the court than yeah. they have, you know, under obviously under like, you know, previous management. <laughs> yes. You know, um, like, I feel like, I feel you like know, the, yeah. AK coming on to be GM was like, yeah, it, it definitely felt different because we had it feels like there's a culture felt change. Hopeless. Yeah. Yeah. There's a culture change. And like, I think, you know, obviously, like DeMar DeRozan's like having, you know, an amazing run on the mm -hmm. Bulls. Like he's just like, a really fun player to watch. I love his game from a um he sort of captures a little bit of the modern game with a lot of the old game. Yeah. Uh and and also it's just like it's awesome for him as a player who's like been in the league a while to like have mm -hmm. a little bit of a renaissance and like see it on the Bulls Definitely. is awesome. So I love that part of it. I think they, you know, again, I think they have some nice pieces. Like, like, are they, you know, given, given kind of the makeup of quality teams right now in the NBA, you know, like, do they really have enough, you know, to compete, Yeah. you know, in that, in that, in those top seeds, you know, I think they're probably missing a piece. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know what that is exactly. Cause on the one hand, they, you know, when they're, like when they're scoring as a team, you know, when you have three guys like all getting buckets at, you know, 20 to 30 points, you know, they look pretty formidable. Um, but yeah, it seems like maybe, maybe there's a still a piece missing, something like X factor yeah. piece, you know, that really kind of like gets them into more competitive, you know, spot. Right. I do, I do worry that uh, the, the window is going to be too short uh because i think we lose vooch after this year uh, yeah and i don't think DeRozan either has one more year or this is his last year so i i don't know what's going to happen but i i still do love you know i have hope for patrick williams uh, definitely kobe is honestly i was like over kobe and then like this year and like a little bit last year i'm like okay mm -hmm. i kind of like him again ao has been interesting but he's kind of down this year a little bit yeah yeah so it's interesting. Yeah, some guys have like, had some, Yeah, some guys have had some flashes, you know, but mm -hmm. like not quite consistent yet. Um, yeah. like young talent, not quite consistent yet. But mm -hmm. yeah, to your point, I mean, like windows in in the NBA, you know, close pretty fast these days. Like, yeah, uh, you know, unless you really unless have, you're the Warriors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's like, and, and I mean, yeah, the Warriors. Like, I mean, they made some moves that have just kept them. Yeah. You know, really, I mean, like Wiggins, who would have thought Wiggins would come right. in and be the game changer you know, Jordan that he Beale was? Or Jordan yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, you know, they've just made a lot of smart decisions. Also probably had some really good luck and fortune, yeah, <laughs> you know, and the fact that they have, you know, the greatest shooter in the history of the right. NBA alongside, you know, <laughs> alongside Clay Thompson is, yeah. like, is like, yeah. Um, you know, that always blows my mind too that like they won championships and then everyone got hurt so they're like all right let's just get the second pick in the draft and even though Wiseman hasn't really kind of been able to show up yet it's still insane that they're like okay now we're back again yeah yeah I mean yeah it's it's interesting it's like I don't know if it's like a little bit of uh you know when you're really good you know and you have some flexibility in terms of how you manage like whatever it is, like the, the dollars, right. Yeah. That are, that are attached to your team. Um, uh, you know, can you stay like, there's a better chance you can stay good. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> totally. And like stay in the mix as opposed to like, but I just think there's some teams that just also, I don't know. It's like, you look at like the blazers, like, like they've had like great pieces, right. Yeah. Dame is, is, I mean, one of the, one of the most fun players to watch. Absolutely. You know, he's had some great, great years with great numbers. He's definitely like a, uh, he cares about winning, mm -hmm. you know, um, he obviously cares about 
being in Portland, at least currently as yeah. well, which is like put him in a tough spot a little bit in terms of mm-hmm. like really winning. But like they just can't seem to get the right guys all together to make a run. And then once they do make a run, like who look who they're staring down, you know, in the yeah. West. So, I mean, you just like it's a, uh, you know, it's tough up at the top of of either conference Definitely. right now, you know. I feel like the East really it used for the longest time the West dominated, but I feel like the East finally kind of took a yeah, a little it feels bit of a, a little more even. Yeah, it feels a little more even now. Like definitely, the Celtics are clearly yeah. a very very good basketball team. Um, the, the Sixers have been up there, right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, there's like there's a lot of like solid competition up there. Yeah, the yeah. Bucks, the Nets, like kind of quietly, like you know, right. putting it together. Um, so yeah. <laughs> It's uh it's an interesting time, you know, as far as this season goes. Like I, you know, we have we have half season, a little more than half season left, so I have my hopes, but you know, I I hope it feels like there's consistently like this maybe we'll make the play in. You're you're floating around the edge of the playoffs. Uh but you never know. You could really you can have a crazy second half, maybe like that kind of uh locker room. Yeah, for sure. Had changes things. For sure. And I mean, I think like, like most major, like sports associations or organizations, whatever leagues, um, you know, there's not a ton of parody once you get like up mm-hmm. to the cream of the crop, you know, it's like the same teams usually are in the mix. I mean, like what Milwaukee's done is amazing. Like when you yeah. think about like just what they've been able to put together in terms of like the talent they have on that team and the coaching and putting it together year over year right. to be competitive. Like they've built like a team that's not going anywhere. Yeah. Anytime soon. You know, I think um, what's cool with Milwaukee is like, they, you know, that we mentioned coaching, they, they tried Jason kid. Like it's not working. Mm-hmm. And then they yeah. got, they finally got new coach and it's like, okay, this one works. They won a championship out of it. Yeah, totally. So, you know, I mean, I, I think the, like, it'll be interesting to see what, what happens in Chicago? Like, do they care enough about winning that they're willing mm-hmm. to keep making some moves, you know, to try to improve the right. team? Cause like, I don't think that as much as I'd love to say this team's got it, like, yeah. you know, I'm not sure this team really has what it takes to like compete at. And part of it's just like, you know, you got a lot of young talent, mm-hmm. like on like Boston, Milwaukee, like, like, you know, it's not like, like guys who are going to be, entering their prime superstars you know and like superstar players like right like you need no team in the nba is going to get there without like a guy that is top 10 marquee right you know like that's just how the nba i feel like is built at this point you know it's funny it's like so many people like like i i I feel like the game i feel like there's great like you could put on like any you know any game Mm -hmm. these days in the NBA and see a great player play. Absolutely. Which, which is what I love about it. You know, like the modern game, like, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's changed some since whatever, like the, the grinded out like eighties, nineties days of the game or whatever, but just feels like there's such supreme talent and everyone's like, so like you're talking about seven footers who have like, who are just like so nimble and like, like who have like the full tool set. I mean, it's just crazy. Like how, the athleticism of the game has evolved. Yeah. Um, everybody's just so good. <laughs> I know. It's like, you know, I feel like John Morant gets brought up like once an episode. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, yeah. he's just so fun to watch. Yeah. He's, or... yeah, he's I mean, his athleticism and like his talent is just yeah, like, you know, just exponential. It's just so out there. And then you get a guy like uh Wen Banyama who might get drafted next year. And it's just like, I don't even know like what to expect. I can't even, yeah. I can't even wrap my head around like what that guy's game looked like. Um, I mean, in the NBA, you know? That's, yeah. We also forget that similarly Chet has been out all year and that we haven't mm-hmm. got to see him yet. And he is kind of of that same, you know, he's super tall, but he can kind of handle the ball and, and yeah, totally. Around. But yeah, it's interesting, man. I think the the game is in like a, a cool spot. I feel like yeah. it, a lot of teams are fun to watch. For sure. Um, why don't we go ahead? I, I I mentioned to you there's a little a little game to play. Call it musician matchups. Um, <laughs> so the idea being, you know, we'll take some Bulls yeah. players. 
and you tough? come up with yours yeah i'll come up with mine we'll compare our answers yeah yeah for sure um yeah, yeah i feel like this game is tough right? <laughs> it is tough but it, it it gets pretty funny to to when you when you justify what uh, <laughs> what your answer is i don't care how ridiculous yeah. it is it's always fun to do but it's fair enough fair enough we'll, all right we'll, cool. we'll start with dennis rodman yeah dennis rodman man there's so many so many ways you could go with this yeah uh, this is this one is like i mean he's really um really the most like yeah sort of interesting curious i think figure to ever ever put ever step on the court yeah. so my my association with dennis robin i kind of like yeah again i've got like probably three or four ideas but i'm gonna go lady gaga <laughs> okay cool and i just I mean, feel personality like, wise i see it personality wise like really um like fit it ultimately found a way to fit in but pretty non-conforming yeah um like undoubtedly like before they before the nba ever was like uh associated with like fashion or right. or anything like dennis rodman was showing up in you know all sorts of like outrageous you know clothes and outfits um and and just pressing buttons you know yeah. so okay so yeah, who I, you got I, I totally see that um so I went I went thematically with my picks because uh, I'm very happy to finally do uh, I'm going to do all Chicago bands in okay. how I'm doing this or musicians. Um, and Dennis Robin's tough because I feel like he actually fit the least into this bucket because picking out a, a Chicago <laughs> band who has that kind of personality, I, I can't really think of many because um, initially I, I went with just just based on how he played the game, I went with Rise Against just because he, you know, mm -hmm. he liked to get in there and he liked to thrash yeah, around. Yeah, fair and... enough. Yeah, I was thinking but... like, I was like core, I was like some like, like some kind of like, like really like uh, almost unapologetically like yeah. sort of like thrashy band that maybe you don't totally like, but totally. it was like, um, yeah. But I feel like actually <laughs> trying to think more about it, the, the, the multitude that contains Dennis Rodman, I feel like like earth, wind and fire, because that's just kind of like, there was also like a little bit of poetry to like the way he played, but it was like such a broad spectrum. Oh, for sure. No, no. I mean, the thing about Dennis Rodman is that like, like, like he, like what he did well, he did in a way that was like very, um, uh, uh, what's the word? Like, uh, like finessed, mm -hmm. like, you know, like, like he was rough around the edges, but then you like watch him do the things he did well. And, you know, he did have a certain like, like flow to like how he played. Yeah. You know, I he think, wasn't just uh, all like rough and tumble. I think it, maybe it was Draymond Green who said watching Dennis Rodman get rebounds was like poetry. It's a fair, yeah. it's a fair I statement. Get it, yeah. <laughs> I like, I, no, I like, I like that. I like the earth, wind and fire. Uh, comparison. Yeah, that was it's good. That was a tough one. Cause like, how do you just, how do you sum up Dennis Rodman without just man? Like, it's Dennis Rodman. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, he is like again, like one of the more unique characters. Um, you know, and like it's interesting. It's like, like I remember Rodman on the Pistons. I hated Rodman more than anything, and then if he came to the Bulls, and like it took a while yeah. to like, to like finally buy him. <laughs> yeah, it's it's that you know the sort of. Uh, Jokey Noah effect where like you hate him unless he's on your team. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 100%. <laughs> cool. Uh, next one on the list we have is Zach Levine. So this one is hard for me because like, I feel yeah. like, like, like Levine is a great player. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, like I was trying to like, I was like watching some clips, like just thinking about like his style. Cause like, yeah. it's like, he doesn't like, I feel like he kind of like, it's a little bit like under the radar i guess mm -hmm. kind of um and he just has like a style that's not like uh i don't know i mean, it was a tougher one for me to like really describe although the more you watch him the more i was like all right so here's why i, I was zach i went with with uh with bad brains <laughs> so and my thinking here is effectively like 
he kind of moves, he kind of plays at, um, in like spurts, you know, like, like from speed and like, yeah. he's obviously like very, very athletic and, and kind of, I guess like high flying in a certain mm-hmm. kind of way. Right now, obviously he's expanded his game a ton, but he just like plays with like a, like a, a kind of when he's like going to the, when he like gets the first step on you, right. He's going to the rim. There's just yeah. like kind of like, like uh, um, frenetic, almost like, like hard sort of style. Right. Um I don't think of him as like, and I say this again, as just trying to justify my answer a bit, but like, I don't think of him as a particularly like smooth player. I think of him as being like pretty edgy. Sure. Um, and, uh, but it's interesting. Cause like, I haven't gotten to watch him as much like, cause he's really like, since I've been on the West coast, but right. he's actually from the Northwest, which is like mm-hmm. really interesting. Um, like, like Seattle area anyway. So yeah, I just, I feel like he's got a kind of like punk spirit somewhere in there. Yeah. Well, I feel like too, he's like, you know, people associate Zach Levine as like, you know, dunk contest. He's he's just like a pure dunker. But and when you compare it, you said bad brains. Yeah. So it's like it's deeper than that, you know? Like I feel like everyone's first first perception is bad brains, you know, they're a specific type of music, but they're actually there's some there's some deep more oh, deepness for sure. to it. For sure, for sure. It's like, yeah, there's there's definitely there's a balance there. There's like uh a combination of styles and kind of spirits right yeah. um that uh yeah i think it'll be yeah it'll be I'm, I'm curious to hear hear your answer but i think zach would be interesting he's he's a young guy like i think yeah. we forget how young he is as a player yeah, like yeah. he's got some room to grow you know definitely well for my pick you'll have to hear me out here because i actually went with lawrence arms <laughs> because <laughs> because i'll give you a good reason <laughs> I do feel like Zach has kind of like what I mentioned before. He's got like two sides to him. You know, there's the dunker, which is yep. the Brendan songs. <laughs> and then there's like the other side, which is like your songs. I feel like, cause he can, he can shoot threes, you know, he yeah. can, he can be kind of more delicate with the ball when he needs to. And uh, I feel like pe- people paint him into like one lane, but really he's got like these, these both sides and you get these like, two different kinds of songs for long terms, you know? I think that's a fair, I think it's a fair <laughs> analogy. I think it's a fair analogy definitely yeah i mean he, he, I'm, I'm sure uh you're happy to hear that Z- uh, the lawrence arms are the zach levine of of music so that's, that's great <laughs> Dude, i'll take it <laughs> i will take it any day yeah <laughs> cool um so next we, we mentioned before derrick rose derrick rose man this is a tough one too um i've got two I'm trying to think of like like i thought about this a lot um trying to think about which which one makes more sense i got mm-hmm. maybe I'll, I'll share one and i'll tell you what my other thought was but so derrick rose i went with um oh def leopard <laughs> <laughs> so and my thinking here is like you know um like not stylistically but he he like came into the league right he was one thing and he went through you know a lot of turmoil and like found his way out the other side and kind of reshaped who what his game was and who mm-hmm. he was to find a place you know in the league in a way that is like compelling and yeah. now i certainly wouldn't be like i'm not some like big def leppard fan or anything <laughs> but like def leppard was like big ass band and then rick allen lost his arm and they're mm-hmm. like what are we gonna do man and they found a way to kind of like remake it figure out what they had to work with and like go on and have like big hits. So I was just thinking like, essentially like big comebacks. Now is Derek Rose's comeback is like, like the stuff of legends. I don't know. Kind of depends on how you think about it, but I'd say what he went through from an injury perspective and where he is now as a player, Mm. I'd say it's a, um, it's up there to me as like, as like, amazing comeback stories where he really like has found a great spot for himself like on a team as a key player i mean there's there's proof that a lot of players had pretty nasty nasty injuries as well and they they never recovered they never came back to the nba like brandon roy you know like yeah totally he he kind of never came back but derrick rose is he is an everyday player and he's 
he's doing pretty good. He's he was the highest uh, Knicks uh, All Star vote voter. Which yeah, is and he ridiculous, like ridiculous, but <laughs> and he kind of plays. You know, he's still Derrick Rose, but like mm-hmm. he's figured out how to be not the severe player. He knows he can't spring like that anymore. Yeah, that, that he was, and like he expanded his game to you know to mm-hmm. kind of like uh, acclimate to you know what is what he's capable of as a right. player. It's like so it's interesting like. He uh, actually ends up being a really like great story. Those mm-hmm. were tough, you know. Like those injuries were really, really tough um, yeah. as Bulls fans to watch. Definitely, and I mean, come on, you—you you, if you watched that fifty-point game on the Timberwolves, you can't tell yeah, me you oh, didn't man, feel that something was there. That was <laughs> yeah, for sure, man, for sure. All right, so I'm curious what yours is, and I got so, like. You know, maybe a, a second one I'll float at you. <laughs> okay. Mine, so I went with like, because I talked previously about, air, you know, the kind of like Derrick Rose era was like my era. Like he was like yeah. the guy of like my time watching the Bulls. So I had to like, if, in terms of Chicago bands, maybe not the biggest of all time in Chicago, maybe may, may close to it. But uh, f- certainly for me and when I was into it is Wilco. <laughs> uh because i i mean wilco is one of my favorite bands and i feel like you know the it also actually lines up that the time i really got into wilco was the time i was really into derrick mm-hmm. rose and the bulls and i feel like that just kind of like made sense because that's kind of like way up there in the the chicago music stratosphere for sure or not I, I like it there's a kind of like uh yeah there's nothing to do with this play style, obviously, because it's a no, very no, different no. But type, like, but... there's a the kind of like uh, trajectory that I don't yeah. know. Found a place in the, found his place in the world, uh, so right. to speak. You know, and it kind of makes sense. I was thinking the other one. I was thinking of was Common. Actually, is a Chicago mm. guy. Nice. Because like Common kind of had like a break point where things mm. really kind of changed for him. Like he put out a record that people were like, man nobody is into this and then he like <laughs> kind of refound himself a little bit but yeah yeah it's a good one okay uh so the last one which in my opinion is actually the hardest one because like how do you encapsulate michael jordan i mean impossible yeah <clears throat> impossible like there's like a, a million different ways to go on this and like uh, basically asking like who's the greatest band of all time <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah, I know, right? And so, like, obviously, like, very subjective. Like, yeah. I, yeah, I toss this around a lot. So here, here's where I'm at. Okay. Michael Jordan, Whitney Houston. Oh, wow. So, uh, Whitney Houston, you know, you can argue all you want about who's the greatest singer of all time, right? Just like you can start to argue about, you know, who who is the goat, you know, mm-hmm. and we can, like, there's a million different pundits on a million different shows who have had this argument you know about michael jordan versus lebron or whatever like it doesn't really matter like the greats of all time like Mm -hmm. like somewhat subjective but whitney houston in the 80s seven consecutive number one 100 top 100 billboard hits arguably just you know uh the 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 greatest you know of of all of all time and then i thought about this a few different ways one was just sort of like kind of record shattering right like also arguably probably started to really shape and change the music industry Mm -hmm. you know which you know i think michael jordan for all his greatness as a player like he completely changed globally what the nba was and what the style of basketball was going to be going forward and then you know the other part is just there is a like a power and a command and a kind of like uh um i don't know like there's like something about listening to whitney houston saying that's like almost like competitive like i'm yeah. so good at this that like <laughs> yeah there's no way you're better than me so i mean that's from my, a strict that was my vocal perspective like like easily one of the best vocal talents of all time it's just right up there yeah. like the other one i was thinking of was like, well you go i want to i want to hear yours before i start throwing out oh, all sure. ideas. <laughs> but yeah so yeah Whit- whitney houston michael jordan I, I i almost feel like he was like playing greatest love of all like yeah. before he like hit the court 
but honestly it's fun it's funny you say that because uh before i get into my pick on a similar note uh i, I had um someone from my morning jacket on and he was a Cavs fan and i asked him to do this for lebron which is you know there's always the mm-hmm. comparisons between lebron and, and jordan and he came out with prince and I feel like, you know, if we're looking at Whitney and Prince in that same conversation, the same way we would look at LeBron and Jordan, which is really totally interesting. So I, I, I feel that pick um, because I have my my subcategory of all Chicago yeah. yep. local. I'm trying to think of who's who's my kind of top pinnacle. I feel like just Smashing Pumpkins, like it's just so hard to match. And I feel like even then Smashing Pumpkins maybe is not – enough for michael jordan but like maybe not if you, if you encapsulate it in a certain like bubble of time it, right right but um you know it's, like, it's really hard to, to pinpoint it because i don't know who who else who else would it be is, is it you know is it chicago <laughs> like is it sticks right. or uh maybe earth wind and fire would have been better for jordan honestly <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like i mean jordan is like yeah, I don't even know. I was thinking like, like he's just so transformative, you know. Yeah. Um, so you almost want to be like Elvis, you know, because just like right. every there was like, or like the Beatles or whatever, because it's like there was the NBA before Jordan and there's the NBA after Jordan, basically. Mm-hmm. Like he is the line of demarcation in terms of like, like commercially, yes. like global, you know, like interest, the style of the game, the way the games mm-hmm. play. I mean, like everything just. Like it's hard to pinpoint in music who is the most like culturally transformative figure, uh, you know, and or not just culturally but also commercially like transformative yeah. figure. Of I feel like all uh, time, pretty yeah. tough like to pinpoint. I mean, removing my my sh- Chicago lens, it, yeah, Elvis, the Beatles, like Nirvana. The, yeah, uh, the, I mean, the like, fact that that Jordan kind of like created sneaker culture like is a whole other level that totally goes beyond yeah. his game and yeah. you know you could bring up with elvis like that he brought sex into music and mm-hmm. um you know the beatles popularizing rock and roll like you know there's so many different things that that are iconic like that that can only be compared to jordan yeah and there's just like there's only so many figures in the history of anything that like show up in the moment where like everything changes yeah you know Definitely. like so good stuff man that was that was that was a hard one to to have to figure <laughs> out and hopefully i'll never have to figure it out again <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's a, uh, it's a tough one yeah that but that that's all i got this is uh this was a good time man good stuff man yeah definitely super fun to to talk about hoops and music always yeah. two things i love very much absolutely and uh i mean musically if anything going on soon are you just kind of chilling at the moment yeah chilling at the moment you know we'll yeah. see what happens um you know obviously like like i said earlier it's like you know something will start to like bubble up and, yeah. and happen but yeah kind of quiet quiet times right now so cool we'll, we'll see thanks again for coming on man and go bulls yeah no doubt man